I received a lot of questions regarding the lab on, that was done on Friday, and I apologize because in class we are not up to date, but that always happens. Um, the lab always gets ahead of the lecture in the summer the way it's timed, and there's nothing we can really do about it because I can't just skim over things. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the lab, and I'm going to try to do it very, very quickly. Okay, so, um, so what you're doing in lab is you're taking, you're taking um, xylene, you're adding bromopropane in the presence of aluminum chloride, and you know, there's some info on this up, and you're getting these two products, presumably. This product is a rearranged product. I want to make the point that the whole reaction is under kinetic control. This reaction is under kinetic control. Okay, so it's not really about naming a kinetic product, because if you saw what the thermodynamic product was, you'd be really surprised. Um, but anyway, how does this reaction occur? The reaction occurs, so what is the mechanism? <coughs> the mechanism is that, and you know, presumably this has gone, been gone over in your class, but the mechanism is that this complex is with aluminum. Okay, the reason this happens is, um, and I'm going to talk about this more in class, but this is a um, very strong Lewis acid. This is like a pretty strong Lewis base. So they get together and they form this complex. Where this is negative and this is positive. And um, what this does is it makes this carbon very, very, very plus. Okay? So this is a very strongly positive carbon. It's almost, but not really... It's almost this. And we know this doesn't exist because that's a primary cation. So it's sitting there and the, the aluminum is like vacuuming the charge off that cation. Now if you got this cation, what you'd expect is a hydride shift to form, you know, something like a secondary cation. Okay? And that appears to be what's happening here. It appears to be some kind of a rearrangement because you're getting both. Okay. So... Let's take a look, look at this after you form the cation. So once you get a cation, whatever it might be, and these reactions are hard to do because benzene rings are not the most reactive, but this benzene ring is actually pretty activated because it has what we would call from class with our diels alder electron donating group. So this ring is actually very rich in electron density. But you would take either of your cations, and you would take the pi bond out. And it's like you're doing an addition reaction. And all these positions are the same, so it doesn't matter where you hit it. And you get this. And when you do this, um, this group is hooked on. There's a hydrogen there. The plus is here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of resonance here. So I'll write draw resonance because you guys should be able to do it. All right, so there's some resonance stabilization. This is called the um, wet Weyland Intermediate. And we're going to go over this in class at some point, but not on this particular reaction. All right, so then you get this, and what happens, because benzene rings are so stable, they go back to their aromatic state. So this will not stay like this. So what it does is the aluminum chloride, which is a catalyst, and it's a true catalyst, will go back to its original state by pulling a hydrogen off and eliminating. So these reactions are really additions followed by eliminations. Okay, so once this is done, you have a substitution product. So eliminate, addition followed by elimination is really a net substitution. I don't know if that makes any sense. So you would get this and you'd get some of this. Okay, so now summing up in a nutshell, what is the lab about? In a nutshell, here's the deal. There's like a timeline. Okay? And, what, and I'll give you a little piece of information to help you with the timeline for, so you can figure it out. But you're starting with this. This is really where you start. You add this. You make this. This makes this very positive. This rearranges, like that, okay? All along while this is happening, this takes time, this takes time, or it has a certain rate, you could say, rate, 
okay? And then hanging out through this whole process is para xylene. Para xylene, okay? Now what can happen? Para xylene can grab this and go through that mechanism that I just wrote to form this compound. That's the so-called n-propyl. This compound can go through the same reaction and form the isopropyl. What I want you to consider is the fact that this reaction also takes time. And this is a crossroad. So when you get to this point, this can either go this way or it can go that way. And you probably remember in class, I kept saying, you don't know how much rearrangement you're going to get because rearrangement takes time. And it's part of the sequence. So the thing is, if this time is longer than that time, you're going to get more of this product. If this time is longer than this time, you're going to get more of this product. Now, what does that depend on? It depends on the aromatic structure. And I want you to consider this as a final point. If you have this, this is just plain old benzene. This will help us in class. If you have plain old benzene and you add this very well-known reaction, you do this, you get, and you can compare this to your results. Sorry about my bad writing here, I'm rushing. This is, um, you get like about 66% of this and about 33% of that. Now compare that to your results. Think about what alkyl groups do, right? Alkyl groups push density in and they make the ring really rich in density and that makes the ring more um, nucleophilic, okay? This ring doesn't have those groups. So alkyl groups in a benzene ring are very much the way they are in a, in a Diels alder, which we spent a lot of time on this week, kind of the setup for this. Okay, so I'll see you in class.